lady. <laughs> so my hair's doing. <laughs> well, hello, you gorgeous bunch. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and joining me today to talk about some favourites and updates from my collection at the moment. It feels like it's been such a long time since I've done a video like this. And I was looking around my collection thinking like, what have I got to share? Because it felt like I didn't have anything. <laughs> but I know I've got loads to share with you. So I did have a little look around and I have got a nice little collection of plants dotted around underneath me at the moment to share with you. I know there are some of you waiting to see the anthurium seedlings that I've got and how they're doing. They're not in this video. They're gonna have their own dedicated video because I'm gonna do some repotting, I'm gonna do some upsizing, give them some better substrate. So that video will be coming very soon. Having said that, we do have some anthuriums in this video along with some other plants. I'm gonna count how many I've got to share with you because I don't actually know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've counted that weird. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Maybe 14 plants to share with you. I've tried really hard to not include all of the new ones that I've got in March. Um, I don't know what order these videos are gonna be going up because I'm kind of like batch filming at the moment. So you may or may not have already seen like the plants that I've bought into my collection in March. So I've tried not to include the plants in that video just because you've already seen them. There is one. There is one from that video that is in this video and I'm just gonna get that over with now. It is my Calathea Varsaviskii jungle velvet, however you say it. I adore this plant. I adore it. I am, I can't believe it took me so long to get one. I've wanted one for so long. And every time I see them in garden centres or plant shops, I would stroke it. Like, have you felt these leaves? If you have never felt these leaves, you need to. Like, they are so unbelievably soft I could oh it like the undersides especially I could just stroke this plant for hours <laughs> so every time I walk past it I just need to give it like a little pat it's just stunning like you can see the shine of the velvet there how beautiful and like the the underside I'm probably not going to be able to capture that on camera but it's the underside that is super super soft it's got that gorgeous deep purpley colour. Yeah, I, <laughs> this is absolutely a favourite in my collection. It's doing quite well. I am a little bit nervous about it. I just, like, we know I'm not the best at watering and these guys like to not dry out. So I'm trying really hard to keep an eye on it and I just want it to thrive in my collection. I want it to be massive. I just, I mean, it's pretty big already, but <laughs> I love it so much. It's beautiful. That's the first one I wanted to share with you. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this fringe. <laughs> okay, next, I'm actually gonna share with you the other prayer, ugh, words, the other prayer plant that I have to share. And this one, like, there's nothing particularly exciting going on with it. I just, I've just really been appreciating. God, it looks stunning. Does it not? How, like, that is popping on camera. Wow. You can see there are some, like, crispy tips. Like, this one's really quite prominent down here. But, my God, like, this plant is just, I love it. It definitely handles being underwatered better than you would think it would. Um, it does get the crispy, crispy tips, as you can see, but it bounces back really well. It propagates really easily. And I'm just, I'm enjoying the like growth pattern of it. Like the way it's dangling. There's a fully crispy, <laughs> crispy leaf right here. Let's just pluck that off. I like the way it's starting to dangle and trail, like compared to Compared to this Maranta Sister Lucaniora, 
like I do love it it's got some new growth back here which is always exciting because they come out a bit red like the variegated one but it just it's just kind of bushy like it doesn't trail like this one like technically this one's been in my collection longer but the new growth that it puts out throughout the winter is small so I chop it off and it never quite gets to like trailing size whereas these leaves always seem to come out at the same kind of size throughout the summer and the winter so I don't have to chop it back. I'm just really appreciating how stunning it is at the moment I just it's so striking it's so beautiful yeah. We're on to lemon lime. Um, let's jump to an update one so I fairly recently was that like January February chopped loads of my Epiphyllum anguliga off and I did trade quite a few of those chops in the plant swap recently but I just wanted to share how much new growth is happening. Like, can you see all the kind of pinky coral orange pops of new growth? There is loads, absolutely loads going on and I'm so happy. They're all coming out in the shape that you would expect none of that kind of spindly long growth that I did chop off <laughs> I'm just really happy with it it's huge and it's just going to get bigger I think it's going to be a good growing season for this guy look at that <laughs> that was one giant oh words that was one jungle cactus update let's go to another one so <laughs> this is an epiphyllum oxy it's gone the name is gone but it, it's the like the orchid queen of the night orchid cactus yeah that one i bought it as like this cut with i think this growth point was on it and it got ripped in my care which is very sad but it has shot out <laughs> this which is it's actually a stem because these are cacti so these are stems they don't have leaves um it shot all this out and it started to like spread and branch near the top here <laughs> look it looks like a snake's head like <laughs> ridiculous um i just wanted to share that update really just because i mean it's, it was this long stem for such a long time such a long time and then it's just suddenly started to like flatten out and like I don't know if this will get any wider than this or whether like any further down here will get any wider or whether this is kind of it it's got this cute little like pink tip at the top where it's still growing and expanding but I mean how ridiculous <laughs> We have no control over how these plants grow half the time, do we? Like that is just so silly. But I'm enjoying <laughs> I'm enjoying watching the process. <laughs> so this next one is an orchid, an actual orchid, not a jungle cactus orchid. So this is oh, what is it? Is it silver pack? It's Pathio Pedlum. Pinocchio. I don't know, I can't remember. But basically I bought this as a it was a flowering plant when I bought it and the way it was like packaged it had like a big bit of like plastic around it and on the car journey home the flower kept knocking against the plastic and basically the flower just died really quickly so I quite quickly lost the flower that I bought it with but it has since grown this flower for me which look how cute there is another one just here this little bud and what I'm just really enjoying is it it's like the leaves are just kind of you know not the most interesting of leaves there is there's a couple of pups in this pot quite an interesting growth pattern but the petiole of the flower like the stem of the flower and the flower itself is fuzzy it's so soft like I don't know if you can really like capture it on camera like, you see how fuzzy it is? Like, I don't know if the stem will pick up, but it's really soft to like touch. And I mean, yeah, the Calathea Velvet Jungle thing, I'm sure you figured out that I quite like soft things. 
I'm just really enjoying having this orchid flower. I just think it's such a funny little unique flower. I love that it's like a white and green. Yeah, I'm just really enjoying it and I wanted to share it. Right, okay. I feel like I want to like speed through some of these plants. Let's go to a Hoya. So this is a Hoya flagellata. Flagellata. And I bought this one from Grow Tropicals not too long ago. And I bought it because the leaves reminded me of the Quidatra Sumatra. Is that the name? I think that's the name. Like kind of like rippled rippled in on the margins, speckledy. The flowers are a little bit similar if I'm rem remembering correctly. I think they are a bit fuzzy, maybe not as fuzzy as the Quidotta. Quid I'm, I'm, my name is, my name? <laughs> my brain is not remembering names right now. But what I wanted to show you was it has started, so there's two, two leaves just here on this branch and it has pushed out this leaf and this one in my care. So this one is, it's yellowing. It's not very happy. It got caught on the edge of the pot. So I'm guessing that one will probably just die off. But this one is so beautiful. It's still, it's still really soft, but why, <laughs> why is the margin not wibbly wobbly? Like, can you see kind of like, you know, this wibbly, wobbly, kind of gnarly, Jurassic edge to the other leaves? Why is it not like that? Will it happen eventually? Do you have a Hoya similar to this? Like, the leaf is very, very soft. I mean, it's huge. Like, it's the biggest leaf on there. <laughs> is it still, has it got more stretching to do? Will it get the wibbly edges after? Have I done something wrong? Like I want, I want the wibbly edges. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'll be intrigued to see what happens with these two up here on this vine. There is this vine, which is what the big one's on. It doesn't look like there's another leaf coming in on that one just yet, but yeah. Just wanted to share that. And if any of you have this plant or have the Quidatra Sumatra, and know that the leaves do it, do that on this, like they come out flat and then they crinkle at the edges. Let me know. I'll be very intrigued to know. So the next plant I wanted to share with you is another Hoya actually, and it's my Hoya Katzbergii. And I am just, I'm loving this Hoya. It sits in my cabinet and like this ring of circular leaves against the black background, it just, pops and I I'm loving it so much it's had quite a few leaves fill out on this side I would like some more on this side like if, if you could if you would that would be grand um the most current leaf is this little one here that's got the little like heart-shaped bump it's not hardened off it's still going but I'm just I really really love this Hoya I don't hear anybody talk about it and I I really really love it I'm such a fan I definitely need to get it onto like a better trellis because it's leaning. This was just a makeshift one that I made. <laughs> but yeah, really, really loving this Hoya and I just wanted to share it with you because it's so beautiful. And I don't feel like it's one that's re regularly talked about. I'm just giving it a little moment in the spotlight. Oh, you can see my disco, disco balls <laughs> reflections. <laughs> Seeing as we're talking about the Hoyas, I may as well show you the other Hoya that I wanted to share with you in the last one, and that is this guy. This was sold to me as a Hoya Meredithii. I don't know if that is correct. Like whenever I look at the like hashtag on Instagram, I'm never completely convinced that this is what that is. But this leaf is new. It's not completely finished hardening off just yet. It's not like as dark as these guys but it's much bigger and I'm really happy about it. Like I really, really love, love the veining on it. It's just stunning. The veining on the back is purple. I don't know if that would help anybody ID it. This really, really dark, like burgundy purple color. There is also another new leaf down here, which is really, really, new nowhere near hardened off and i'm hoping that will grow a new vine it looks like it could because 
I mean that one I don't know if that one would vine but I'm just I'm happy that these are waking up like my Hoya are waking up they're doing things I feel like they've just not done anything for such a long time so it's just really nice that I've got some Hoya that are actually growing for me these leaves are really dusty probably do some plant chores Next up, I wanted to share a couple of anthurians with you. So if you watched this video, I propagated two of my bigger anthurium plants. One of them is an anthurium pappy crossed with probably forgetii, not completely sure. And then the other was, it was sold as a pure papilla laminum, but isn't, I'm, I'm querying whether it's a velvet moira, I'm not completely sure, I don't know, but in this video I chopped them up and the what I wanted to share with you is the two, so the two top cuttings, I haven't got them with me at the moment, they, well, they're with me in my home, they're in the grow tent, I've not got them with me to share in this video, but they're doing a fine, one of them's put out a new leaf I think, the other one is currently working on a new leaf, the other one is blooming and the, <laughs> the inflow is, it's in the female stage and it is so juicy <laughs> that it's just dripping <laughs> down the stem like it's sticky it's gross I didn't pollinate it but it is um it's really showing that <laughs> it was ready for some pollen like it's a juicy girl she's too juicy <laughs> so the top the top cuttings are doing really well they're fine so what I wanted to show you was the bottom cuttings so this one is the bottom cutting of the possible velvet moira this was the newest leaf it popped out on the stump there was another growth point but it dried out and that one died off unfortunately so i've only got the one um pup on this one you can see that the leaves aren't massively happy i think it's a nutrient thing i think i don't know for definite this was the next leaf that came out on it I don't completely know what happened here. I mean, I could hazard a guess that it dried out whilst it was emerging and I didn't get to it in time. It's got a little hole, but the size for those two leaves to be like the first two that have come out, I think that's pretty impressive. It's probably because it was quite a mature stump, but yeah, quite a lot of texture going on. Still the interesting shape. So yeah, that was the pappy hybrid unknown possible velvet moira and then this one is the pappy hybrid that i think probably has some forgetii in it just because sometimes a leaf will come out with a semi-fused sinus um this i love 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 the way this is growing so it's shot out three pups and they're all growing pretty evenly <laughs> it's a little bush how cute and again like the first leaves that came out like this was one of the first leaves that one was one of the first leaves like they're all decent sizes but they all like you can tell that this is a clone of the mother plant like they look so similar to the mother plant's leaves like just so similar they've got some of them have the like blister variegation you can see that here and like up here like where it kind of gets like silver spots and it's just air bubbles under the surface but they're so just so so cool like this this one's still hardening off down here but it just it literally just looks like a mini version of the mother plant and i'm, I'm just really enjoying how it's growing this little bush <laughs> and i love that they're all growing fairly evenly like it's not one kind of getting too much bigger i mean i suppose this one's got like the biggest leaf on it so far and a bit of dirt on the leaf <laughs> but I feel like it's mostly pretty even it's just so cute <laughs> so I think I've got four plants left I hope I haven't missed anybody out um I'm gonna shuffle away from anthuriums for a minute and talk about philodendron so this is my philodendron patriciae which was an import from equigenera last year sometime um when it arrived it was pushing out this leaf so this one came out in my care but i don't think i can take credit for it but very pretty but this one here 
is still very much hard, um, hardening off, but it's got kind of like this, I don't know, like chocolatey brown colour to it with a really striking vein down the middle. It did struggle a little bit, kind of unfurling at the top here and I had to help it. So it's not come out perfect, but I still, I love like that kind of ribbing is amazing. You see if I can like capture the colour. Ooh, you can kind of see the colour at the back of the leaves. So shiny. It's, it's beautiful. I wanted to share that new leaf with you. I have got this one back here that's like, kind of not quite I mean ideally this one would have come out and sat here hopefully the next one will do that but this one and this one I am considering chopping off just because they kind of get in the way of me trying to place it on the shelf so yeah I really need to like the potting mix it's in I'm happy with it it does need a drink but I want to change the pole out because this pole's not doing anything it's bone dry <laughs> I'm gonna make one of the um moss and tree fern fibre vermiculite poles that I made for my Rafa de Fora for this one and hopefully we'll get some huge leaves. I'm just, I love it. I love it so much. Okay, there are three plants left to share with you and they all, all are words. They are all anthuriums. So let's just start with this guy and for the love of all things, I should have looked at the um, should have looked at the name because I can never remember which way round this is. It's an Anthurium Rugulosum crinatum, crinatum something along those lines. It's another Equigenera order and I love, I love this plant. I wasn't sure when I ordered it, I wasn't sure, but I opened it, fell in love and I still love it. This leaf is still hardening off. It's a really nice little size jump. Look how insane is that texture? How insane is that texture? Is it not the coolest? It's not as defined and is it belate? Like bumpy as a luxuriance, but I really, really love it. This is another leaf that's grown in my care, like, I'm obsessed. It's a very, very thirsty anthurium. Very thirsty. So I, I am going to repot it because it's in this tiny little like six centimetre pot. Um, these little leaves down here, that one's dead. They're both pups. <laughs> They're obviously struggling. I just need to get it out and repot it. There's so many roots down here that could be below a substrate. It needs a much bigger pot so that it can stay hydrated for longer so that this kind of thing doesn't happen. But I love this plant. The, the backs of the leaves are really cool too. They're kind of like fuzzy and really interestingly textured. I, I'm just loving, I'm really, really loving this anthurium. Such a fan. So the next one that I wanted to talk to you about that I've really been enjoying is my anthurium Tim Plowmanii. And again, another Echogenera import. This one has kind of just been like not doing anything. It's done really well in the sense that it, I think it only lost one leaf from import and it's been pretty solid. Like the leaves are, they're good, they're grand. There's a little bit of marking up here, but they're really thick leaves. They're beautiful. They've got this interesting kind of ribbing to them. They're a shiny, but matte, almost sage coloured leaf, which never really captures on camera, but there's kind of like a grey, a grey silvery tint almost, maybe not silver, maybe it's not shiny, but it's a really interesting green. I was worried about it because the roots don't look amazing. You can kind of see, but I feel like, like even though these roots are brown and look a bit gunky, They've all got new growth on them. Where's a fungus snap? Literally <laughs> just flapping around in front of the camera. They've all got new growth on them. So I think maybe it's just a kind of gray, a, gray, a brown rooty plant, but it's just starting here to put out a new leaf. It'll be the first one. 
that I've grown in my care and I'm so excited to see how it grows and how it emerges. Ugh, the fungus knot's here. Ugh. Nope, didn't get it. Bam. I'm gonna put a, put a butterfly in there. <laughs> so yeah, really, really excited. This new leaf, I can't wait to see how it grows, how it kind of unfurls and stretches out and what it's gonna look like. So the last anthurium I want to share with you is actually a pendant anthurium and it has been living in my grow tent. It does really need a repot. Look how tiny and also how full this pot is, but look at those roots. Whew. She's a rooty gal and very, very dry, but it's my anthurium Friedrich Stalii, which again, another, another Equigenera import. I have recently chopped off three leaves that were they just weren't looking their best. They'd like kind of grown like all deformed and like twisted and they were just looking a little bit battered. It did, I think it lost like one tiny baby leaf from import. Um, but all of the others, they just didn't look very great. So having, since having chopped them off, I am loving the way this one is looking. So this leaf and this longest one are ones that it came to me with. This little, <laughs> stubby one up here with the missing tip is the one it was like in the process of putting it out when it arrived so obviously it was very stunted because it was like shipped with this new leaf oh oh no let me just bend that back i might chop that one off potentially and then this one here in the middle has literally just finished hardening off i love the way it's like hanging to the right <laughs> but it is perfect, it's pristine, it's so shiny, and just the point is like pointing. It is gonna bloom, this is a bloom right here. It has already bloomed for me, I didn't do anything with the pollen, I didn't collect it or anything, I just kind of allowed it to do its thing. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do anything with this one, it's very floppy, it's because it's dry. I'm just going to let it carry on growing. I think I would like to move this one out into this area just because I love it so much. Like I've got my Palo de Florum on my shelf. That's a velvety pendant anthurium and I would just love this kind of like, like strappy, shiny leather look kind of anthurium out here too. I think I am going to remove that leaf. Like that would look so much nicer without this one, wouldn't it? So those were all my favourites or all my updates that I wanted to share with you from March. I really feel like, did I even do all of these in January? I don't think I did in February. I've missed filming videos like this. I'm not really sure, like, I'm trying to think of what my content's been looking like recently. <laughs> I don't know what's been going on with it, but I really want to get back into filming these kind of favourites and updates videos regularly for you again, because I've missed sharing things and I know there's so much more that you won't have even seen or know about and I've forgotten that you don't know about it so yeah I definitely need to be a bit more on top of it with my planning <laughs> content. If you do enjoy the favourites and updates videos do give it a thumbs up so that I know that you really enjoy it and if you want to go one step further whack this emoji in the comments and then I'll really know that you do want to see my favourites and updates each month. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and watching to the end. If you did really like it, then check out this video. I think you'll enjoy that one too. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.